Let's actually start off with Italy and this three-year bond auction that we saw coming through. We're worried about some of the borrowing costs, not only for Italy, but also Spain. We saw that happening last week. How serious is the market actually taking all this news? I think the market's uh, honed in on an awful lot, and we've seen currencies um, throughout emerging markets, particularly in Eastern Europe, relinking to the Eurozone issue quite strongly in the last um, few days. But in particular, actually, I think the Spain situation is much more important than Italy. In Italy, the market generally buys um, the consolidation plan that um, PM Monti is putting in place there, whereas in Spain, it's much more about, uh, if you like, a, um, a crisis of, of, of acceptance of what the uh, government is trying to do there. The government wants a slow pace of this consolidation, but a credible one, the market perhaps wants something slightly faster. Um, so in a sense, the, the debate is much deeper, and perhaps you can call it ideological in Spain, that we need to watch going forwards. Yeah. Uh, let's also look at how the euro has been performing, because we've actually seen a much stronger euro, uh, and we've actually seen this kind of uh, range before, Peter. So is it anything to get excited about that we're seeing a bit of dollar weakness? Well, exactly. I think it's been mainly led by the dollar side and people increasingly looking at some of that weaker data that's coming out, um, some weak uh, um, em employment claimant count uh, data that was out uh, at lunchtime today. Um, so more, more a dollar picture, I would say, than necessarily a euro picture. I think people's structural view on the euro uh, has turned slightly worse, but just not showing up slightly uh, really in the price yet. Okay, so when we actually look at the, some of the risks uh, in uh, the overall Eurozone region, Peter, I mean, do you think that the biggest focus then will be on Spain at this stage? You're saying core Italy not looking that bad. We are expecting more economic data to perhaps uh, give us a bit of reassurance that we are reaching the bottom or we're going to reach the bottom in the Eurozone. Well, exactly. There's the mixture of the country-specific uh, stories that's going on where um, undoubtedly Spain is the, the largest uh, sort of issue on the horizon there, I would say, and most, uh, most immediate issue. But also, let's not forget that people are looking and considering the timing of when Portugal may decide that it needs to do some form of um, PSI, PSI like, uh, like Greece did. So they're probably the two main issues there. But also, people, I think, are looking for some reassurance still about the sustainability of, of domestic demand in the core eurozone and we obviously had some softer PMI numbers coming out over the last month on that front so there's a whole range of issues that people are focusing in on both on the macro and on the country specific side. Uh, let's also touch on a big uh, data point tomorrow Peter you're also going to be looking out for the Chinese GDP number that will be released. Exactly. I mean, I think people have come away from the story of a you know, hard landing coming through. People have seen the reaction of the government there, the reaction of the banks uh, or other bank policy um, uh, coming through there. So I think uh, the, the ability for that number tomorrow to really shift um, the story around hard landing versus soft landing is probably much less than it was, say, um, say three or four months ago, but still a pretty important data point for overall uh, risk uh, to watch out for. Mm. Uh, let's also just touch on uh, some of the commentary from Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke last week. Uh, it seems that perhaps we won't see uh, more stimulus into the market, but uh, disappointing non-farm perils number on Friday got people slightly excited that we could actually see things happening. So it's really difficult to understand what we should feel, that when we see a bad unemployment number, we should get excited because we could see stimulus. Uh, you know, it's, it sounds almost contradictory in my mind. Well, I think it depends on how you consider the timing of statements that have come out from the, uh, from the Fed. Um, if you think that some of the minutes perhaps were slightly less um, cautious on the labor market front. Um, but actually, there were speeches after that already um, from both voting and non-voting members of the Fed, which seemed to highlight um, that perhaps the labor market issues and the sustainability of any recovery in the labor market was more of an issue. Um, so framed in that context, perhaps you know, the, the uh, non-farm perils are certainly soft, but I wouldn't say um, they were a huge surprise perhaps to the, the story and how the, uh, how the Fed has been thinking about the labor market.